In this video, I'm not going to delve into PvP, but into fashion. Uh, you see, I'm a role player at heart, and while I am a masochist who does the PvP almost every day, I do not think there's much that I can tell you that actual PvP content creators haven't already told you. So we're going to take a break from melting Grand Overlords on a 200 CP Zerg Blade, and instead find an answer to that ever poignant question, how the hell do I put together a good looking outfit without depleting my gold reserve? If, like me, you play ESO on PC, you will no doubt be aware of the insane inflation that we've seen over the past year. Seeing as it's easier than ever to become an ESO millionaire overnight, it's also easier to sell items for much higher prices than before. This has affected goods such as Golden Mats and Hacky Joe, but also motifs and style pages that you can use to create costumes. To give you a random example, I remember buying Minotaur chests for 45k gold about three years ago. Um, if you look at the listings on PCEU and PCNA right now, anything below 1 million is a bargain. So I mainly play on PCEU, where I have plenty of gold and most of the motifs that I want. So at this point, making a nice looking costume doesn't necessarily bankrupt me, unless I get the unwise idea to buy more outfit slots for yet another character. Now, I recently started uh, a PvP side hustle on PCNA, where I've uh, so far had to invest the little gold that I have to buy mats for detection potions, seeing as everyone there plays a bow ganker and I just can't allow that. However, I cannot just go into Cyrodiil dress in rags, so I did have to get a little creative in terms of what motifs I use to not look terrible. I consider my initial workaround to be a bit of a cheat because I simply used motifs that I got through purchasing the collector's edition of every chapter since Morrowind. So that includes Deadlands Gladiator, Sword Thane, the Fine Prosecutor and a couple of other really useful styles. If you are new to ESO, you won't have access to all those styles. So I decided to put myself in the shoes of a new player and try to make a decent looking outfit with styles that are available to everyone on a budget that is manageable. Before I embarked on this outfit challenge, I set a couple of rules for myself. First off, the total cost of the outfit cannot exceed 100,000 gold. These costs include not just what I pay to obtain the styles, but also the gold I'll be charged for changing an outfit and dyeing its parts. I went with 100k because that happens to be a login reward this month. So this amount of gold is accessible to literally anyone who is logged on a few times this month. A second rule that I imposed upon myself is that I cannot use any styles that are Crown Store exclusive. You have to be able to either buy these styles for a reasonable price on the current PCNA Guild Trader market or obtain them through gameplay. To make this challenge more interesting, I've decided to not allow myself to use more than one part from the same style. So, for example, if I choose a Khajiit chest, I cannot also use the Khajiit pants to go with it. I have to use something else. This is a rule that I often follow on my PCEU account as well, as it makes for more interesting and unique outfits. Finally, to make this truly noob friendly, I chose to only use dyes that are easily obtainable. So no dice that require completing a vet trial or reaching a high PvP rank. With these rules in mind, I set out into the marketplace and quickly found out that shit's expensive. Even older motifs such as Assassin's League and Mercenary would force me to exceed my budget right away. Fortunately, this is not my first rodeo, so I know that certain styles will be much more affordable. These are styles that were recently available through events or are just so incredibly common that the demand will never outweigh the supply. Of course, many of the cheaper styles will also be cheap because they're low res garbage. So I had to find styles that are affordable but also don't look so sleazy that you'd get kicked out of that one brothel in Suran. With that in mind, I made a list of 10 go-to budget styles that I think look cool. Nord Carved Armor, Regal Regalia, Skin Changer, Dremora, Ashlander, Telvani, Greymoor, Dark Brotherhood, Thieves Guild, and Ivory Brigade. This is not a complete list, however. While the old racial styles look kind of wonky for the most part, we'll see soon enough that some of them have great individual pieces that you can use to complete your look. The same applies to the dirt cheap companion styles, 
that flood the market during every anniversary event. With my outfits, I nearly always start with a chest, as the chest is the most defining piece of your outfit. Uh, it's a part that catches everyone's eye. It is also connected to every other part of the outfit apart from the boots, so it really has to blend well with the other pieces. For my chest, I went with Dremora. Dremora is an amazing and underrated motif and also very cheap. Nearly every part of the Dremora motif looks cool, whether it's a chest, the gloves or the weapons. Seeing as I'm only allowed to use one part of it though, I went with a chest. Initially, I chose a jerkin, but as I was building the outfit around it, I figured that the medium version, the Dremora Jack, would look better. The Dremora chest motif I needed cost me 8500 gold at a guild trader in Fargrave. My second and often most difficult part of creating an outfit is the shoulder piece. Shoulders are notoriously difficult to get right because they are prone to either float around the chest or clip into it. Others are just plain ugly. Some of my go-to options are either locked behind real world money or way too expensive for my budget cap. So I had to be a bit creative for my shoulder options, but eventually I settled on the Ice Reach Coven Epaulets. I thought they went nicely with the chest and the small ropes displayed on the shoulder gave me something that I could reflect in other pieces of the outfit. Being locked behind a DLC dungeon, the Ice Reach shoulder motif proved to be by far the most expensive piece of my outfit, but still well within my budget at 35k. For my leg motif, I was able to call in some very cheap help from one of the basic racial styles, namely the Red Guard Breaches. These are fairly neutral looking pants that fill out the gap uh, between my character's hips and Dremora Jack's hip plates well enough. Given how easy it is to get these basic styles from any respectable guild bank for free, I've not added these breaches to the budget. With my chest and leg styles in place, it was time to select a belt. Belts are a bit like shoulders in that you need to make sure they don't either clip through your character's waistline or float too far away from it. I quickly settled on the North Carved Girdle, which you were able to obtain during the most recent New Life event. I already had the motive, but at the time of recording, these belts go for about 2000 gold at PCNA Guild Traders. The price uh, might rise in the coming months though. For the feet, I tend to go for styles that resemble regular boots more than those super heavy sabatons. Again, I have a few favorites on PCEU that I was not able to obtain easily on PCNA, such as the Battleground Runner boots. Luckily, another amazing and underrated option is the Nibbanese Court Wizard boots motif, which I was able to buy for 9000 gold. Seeing as I chose not to use the headpiece, the final armor piece I needed to add was the hand motif. Again, I went for a basic racial style, the Breton gloves, in order to mimic the ropes you can see on the Ice Ridge Colony pallets and sort of tie the whole outfit together. Again, seeing as this is a basic racial style, I have not added it to the budget. Finally, a weapon motif is something that is really up to personal taste, so I just went with one of my favorites, Admiral Thorne's staff. It's a common weapon style that you can find at the Guild Traders for about 3000 gold. Now, with all the motifs in place, all I needed to do was to dye the outfit. As said, I went for dyes that you can obtain fairly easily. Cold Harbor Ash Black and Red Diamond Red are colors that you can earn during the game's main questline, so those should be easily available to just about anyone. I also used a fair bit of Noxophilic Black, which you get by maxing out the Vampire skill line. Again, easy. Then I used Epic Violet, which you can get by wearing a fully uh, purple quality armor set, which is not too difficult seeing as you can just do that with like random armor that you find uh, while questing. Uh, finally, I may have cheated a bit with uh, the Templars Last Dawn, which you get by killing 100 Templars in PvP. But if you don't feel uh, like doing that, then you can always go for Master Gold, which you simply earn by reaching level 50. Taking into account the motifs, style pages, and the costs I incurred at the outfit station, the total costs of my outfit are a little over 65k gold. So this is the outfit I came up with. It's not my best outfit ever, but with my tight budget and other self-imposed restrictions, I think I did a decent enough job. And if all else fails, you can all always just cover yourself with a nice looking tabard. So what do you think? Was my attempt to not look hideous successful? 
Do you have any go-to motifs when you're on a budget? Let me know in the comments below. Finally, a word of thanks to Artea for suggesting the outfitting on a budget concept to me as a good way to start off my video series about fashion and for sharing her knowledge about making video content. I hope to see all of you again soon. With that in mind, I made a list of fucking muffin echt.